All right. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpacha, Shabbat Shalom family, <clears throat> Shabbat Shalom Facebook, want to make sure, yep, my sound is on, <clears throat> all right, hope everybody is having a blessed and wonderful Shabbat shofar, so far, so far, so far, so good, hallelujah, praise Yah, all right, welcome everybody, <clears throat> I am Brother Daniel Brown from SY7 Ministries, coming to you live from Northeast Colorado. Hope everybody's doing well today. Glad everybody could join in today. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. <clears throat> so today, um, my message is going to be called Our Duty as Believers in Yeshua Messiah. <clears throat> what we are to do as children of the Most High Yah. But before we get started, we're going to have a word of prayer. <clears throat> So let's pray, family. Father in heaven, Shabbat Shalom. Abba, we thank you and we praise you, Father, for your Son, Yeshua, for your Holy Spirit, for your grace, for your mercy, for your love, for the forgiveness of sins. Abba, we thank you for this set-apart time. <clears throat> Abba, we thank you and praise you for your mark upon us. Father, we thank you that you have removed the blinders off of our eyes so that we may see and behold your truth, your Torah, your Son, Yeshua. Father in heaven, we thank you and we praise you, Abba, for your grace and mercy and love and long-suffering towards us. Father, we thank you for the technology to be able to come together this today as Mishpaha <clears throat> to read and to study your word. Father, to see what thus says Yehovah, what the scriptures say. Father in heaven, set a guard over the door of my lips that nothing would proceed out of my lips that's not, that is not from you. May it fall to the ground. Father in heaven, we pray today that you would eliminate any and all distractions. Father, that you would cancel any and all plans that the enemy may have. Watch over us, protect us, <clears throat> and bless each and every one of us today. In the name of Yeshua Messiah, we pray, Father. Amen and amen. <clears throat> so before we get into the actual message today, I know I read it last week, but I want to read it again because I believe we need to be reminded, just as the fourth commandment that it is said, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, we need a constant reminder of what this day is all about. It is set apart unto Yehovah the Father, <clears throat> Yeshua Messiah, the living, walking, breathing word. He he showed us how to keep it. <clears throat> and if we keep it, Mishpaha, this is what Yah will pour out upon us. Isaiah 56, 1 through 8. Keep justice and do righteousness, for my salvation is about to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this, <clears throat> and the son of man who lays hold of it, lays hold on it, who keeps from defiling the Sabbath, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Do not let the son of the foreigner who has joined himself to Yehovah speak, saying, Yehovah has utterly separated me from his people. <clears throat> Nor let the eunuch say, Here I am, a dry tree. For thus says Yehovah, to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths and choose what pleases me and hold fast my covenant. Even to them I will give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than that of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name <clears throat> that shall not be cut off. Also the sons of the foreigner who join themselves to Yehovah to serve him and to love the name of Yehovah, to be his servants. Everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant, even to them I will bring my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. The Adon, Yehovah, who gathers <clears throat> the outcasts of Israel, says, Yet I will gather to him others besides those who are gathered to him. When we keep Yah's set-apart day, when we keep the Shabbat holy and righteous and set-apart, he will give us a name 
better than that of the sons and daughters. But if not, we will be cut off. Today is Yah's set-apart day. Today is Yah's Shabbat. His mark upon us that He has given to us to rest, to praise, to worship, to gather together <clears throat> in His holy name. Amen. <clears throat> All right. So the title of my, this message again, I struggled a little bit with the title of this message. I first had it called Tough Love, but then as I was praying, I believe that Yah told me to change the title to Our Duty, Our Duty as Children of the Most High God to proclaim the name of Yeshua, to go out and to be a witness and a blessing and a shining light. <clears throat> and around this time of year, it gets hard for some people. We're out and about, we're conducting our daily business, we're going grocery shopping, we're <clears throat> taking our kids to school, we're doing everything of what we normally do on a daily basis. But this time of year, it's a little bit different. This time of year, we're hearing people say, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, etc., etc. Why is it hard for us? It's hard for us being children of the Most High Yah because we don't celebrate New Year's this time of year. We don't celebrate Christmas. We don't celebrate Advent. Why? Because it has nothing to do with Yeshua Messiah. Once the blinders have been removed off of our eyes, <clears throat> we know for a fact that Yeshua was not born on December 25th. And if we read and study the Bible, we know that the biblical New Year starts in the spring at the spring biblical feasts, Passover, first fruits, and unleavened bread, the month of Aviv, when the first barley is shown, <clears throat> comes of age, it is harvested, and that is the first fruits. When everything starts to come alive again in the spring after a long, hard, cold winter. <clears throat> when me and my family first came out of religion, came out of the Baptist realm, we started studying Yah's Word, started keeping a Shabbat, and started learning the lies that we had been indoctrinated with. <clears throat> and when we started to learn the truth about Christmas, we started digging into the depths of it and how evil and wicked it truly is. Now remember, Satan is the angel of light, and he will paint a pretty picture for everybody to believe a lie. And yes, it is easier to believe a lie than it is to believe the truth, especially when you have been taught it your entire life. I have been there. We have been there <clears throat> before we got brought out. Back in 2013, 2014 is when Yas really started working on our hearts and in our lives <clears throat> to serve and to worship Him as Yah commands us to worship Him. <clears throat> Some of us, we don't want to hurt, we don't want to offend those by being around us, by being a stumbling block, especially if they're just coming into the knowledge of the truth, especially when they're coming in to believe in Yeshua, Jesus, they've repented of their sins, we have a zeal, we want them to serve Yah the way that the Bible tells them, the, the way that the Bible tells them to serve Yah. <clears throat> So sometimes we just smile, we don't say anything at all, and we move on. Is that right or is that wrong? Before this year, that's what I used to do, is somebody would tell me Merry Christmas, somebody would tell me Happy New Year, somebody would tell me Happy Holidays, and I would just smile and just go about my business, and I wouldn't say a thing. This year, it was a little bit different for me when somebody would say Merry Christmas. If I knew them, I would say... You know, I don't celebrate Christmas. It, I, we still believe in the immaculate birth of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. He was born <clears throat> of a virgin, the Virgin Mary, but we also know that he wasn't born this time of year. And so therefore, we don't celebrate Christmas. We don't celebrate New Year. And I would be able, and I was able to go into depth with some of them 
some of the people that said Merry Christmas to me. <clears throat> I was able to give them some biblical truth. <clears throat> was it hard? For some of them, yes, because it was taking a step of faith and really throwing that seed out there, planting and watering seeds to a lost and dying generation. <clears throat> the Father has shown us so much grace and sh so much mercy and love and long-suffering and kindness that Mishpaha, we need to show that same level of grace and mercy and love and kindness and long-suffering to other people. <clears throat> we are to plant and to water seeds, but we don't necessarily receive, we don't necessarily reap the fruit right after we plant and water the seeds. Some take months, some take weeks, some take even years to bring forth fruit, but that should not stop us from planting and watering seeds. Jeremiah 1 verses 4 through 5, <clears throat> Then the word of Yehovah came to me, saying, Before I knew you, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Now, I'm not saying that I'm a prophet. I'm not saying that. I'm just a servant of the Most High God. What I am saying, though, is that we are all called out. We are all set apart. We were all created before Yah formed us in the womb, He knew us, He created us, and He set us apart to be His righteous and holy and set-apart people. <clears throat> he wants us to serve Him the way that His Word says for us to serve and to worship Him. And we cannot be afraid. <clears throat> we cannot back down. We cannot be afraid to tell the truth when it comes to it. Who we truly belong to. Who we are set apart to be. To be that shining light and witness and blessing to a lost and dying world that needs Yeshua. <clears throat> Matthew 28, 18 through 20. <clears throat> And Yeshua came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. In Mark sixteen fifteen, <clears throat> very familiar passage of Scripture, just to give a... Give an, give an idea of where I'm going with this. Mark 16, 15. <clears throat> and he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mishpaha, we've been called out to go. We've been called out to go to the ends of the world. Whether it's just right outside your doorstep to go and preach the gospel or to Israel, to Italy, to the Middle East, to... <clears throat> to wherever we are to be obedient to the call that He has called us to do, to live a life of faith and obedience. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14, For let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. We have been called out. We have been set apart, just like the prophet Jeremiah to go and preach the gospel. The gospel does not start in Matthew 1.1. The gospel starts in Genesis 1.1. And in order, in order to understand the New Testament, Matthew through Revelation, we must first understand Genesis through Malachi, what the disciples were reading from. We need to understand the beginning to understand the end. 
We've been called out to go and preach and to be a witness and a blessing and a shining light. We have been called to be bold and courageous, to have a zeal, to preach the gospel so that no man is perished. Need to preach repentance, need to preach salvation through the blood of Yeshua and obedience to Yah's word from Genesis to Revelation to, cir- to have our hearts circumcised to follow after Him and His ways. We can't do that if we are living like the rest of the world is and what they're doing. We cannot walk with Yah and hold hands with the devil at the same time. It don't work like that. We are part of the bride of Messiah, a pure and spotless bride. We are washed by the blood of Yeshua, and may our robes be spotless for the great and coming day of Yeshua Messiah. I asked a few people this last year as well, who would they rather offend by not keeping Christmas, by not saying Merry Christmas, by not saying Happy Holidays or Happy New Year? And few of the folks told me that they would rather offend God than offend man. My jaw hit the floor. But then after a handful of them, I'm, I got to thinking about it more, and I'm like, it makes sense because you're right here with people. God's not right here standing with you. You can't physically see Yah. You can't physically see Yeshua. And so, <clears throat> of course, it would be more, people would be more apt to say, yeah, I'd rather offend God because He's not here. Well, guess what? He is, and he hears and sees that. There's a meme out there that says, I would rather stand with God and be judged by man than stand with man and be judged by God. And that's where I'm at. Because I don't care what man thinks of me. I used to, but I don't anymore. I'm more worried and concerned about offending Yah than I am man. So, in my estimation... From what I thought on for a little bit, there's two reasons why I believe man would rather offend God than those around them. And number one is there is no fear or reverence for Yah for His Word and His ways because they've been taught a lie their entire lives. And they're afraid of being rejected by man and being cast out by man. And number two, because there is no immediate punishment for their actions. If there was immediate consequences, sin would not look so enticing to people. People on this earth hate to hear the word repent. People in hell wish they could hear it one last time. If people on earth knew what people in hell hell we're going through right now. People wouldn't be so quick to offend God in His ways and mock at Him and break His Sabbath and break His holy laws and commandments and spit in the name of Yeshua. People wouldn't be so quick to do that. Isaiah 66, 1 and 2, that's not up there. I read it last week and I'm going to do it again. Isaiah 66. I apologize about this tickle in my throat. I don't know where it came from. It just came up right before we went live. So bear with me. Isaiah 66, 1 and 2. Thus says Yehovah, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build for me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things my hand has made and all those things exist, says Yehovah. But on this one will I look on him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembles at my word. Trembling at his word. We don't read and study Yah's word enough. We don't pray enough. We don't tremble enough at his word. If we did, 
we wouldn't be in the situation we're in today all around the world. Father, forgive us all of our sins and have mercy on us. O oh, wretched people that we are. And may we repent and turn our lives around and live our lives righteously and holy through the precious blood of Yeshua that was sent before us. <clears throat> Second Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that does, that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And 2 Timothy 3.16, I love these two passages of Scripture. That first one was from the Old King James Version. I've memorized that from years ago. In 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of Elohim and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of Yehovah may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. And with that one, I want to tie in a verse that I read last week. It's not up on the board, and I apologize for that. Ephesians chapter number 2, it just came to me. Verses 8, 9, and 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are His workmanship, created in Yeshua Messiah for good works, which Elohim, or God, prepared before the, beforehand that we should walk in them. The good works are the works of salvation through the blood of Yeshua, sanctified by His Word, walking in, in obedience to the Word of God. Amen. <clears throat> From Genesis to Revelation, there is grace, there is mercy, there is love and long-suffering from Yeshua, our Savior. But that doesn't give us a license to sin. That doesn't give us a license to go do whatever we want to do. Once we completely surrender and submit our lives over to Yah, we are to put away the things of the world, to put away the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and to circumcise our hearts to follow after Him. Mishpaha, my family, it is our job, it is our duty to tell others of the truth of God's Word from generation. From, it is our job and our duty to go out and to preach the gospel to this generation that needs it, to this lost and dying world, whether it's outside the doors of your home or you're called to go across the world, we are commanded to go, and that is part of keeping the commandments and living. We're not commanded to sit on the couch and wait for Yeshua's coming. We're commanded to go out and work. For the harvest is truly plenteous, but the labors are few. Matthew chapter 9, verses 38 and 39. And I'll read that one a little bit later. <clears throat> I preached a message some months ago about the weightier matters of the law. Grace and mercy and long-suffering towards a lost and dying world. The same level of grace and mercy that Yah has shown us, we need to show others. But we need to be persistent in preaching the gospel from Genesis to Revelation, Mishpaha. We need to preach it with our very last and dying breath. I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to just back up a little bit. If we, the same level of grace and mercy that Yah has shown us, to show others, because if He hasn't shown, if He hadn't have shown us so much, guess where we would be? We would still be in our, stuck in our sin, lost on our way to a devil's hell. That's where we would be. There's a fine balance of showing grace and mercy and love while telling and preaching the truth to other people. 
And we need to ask and pray for discernment on how we need to go about that. But what is stopping us from going and preaching the gospel? It's our duty to do so. And sometimes, Mishpaha, we have to show tough love to people. Sometimes we have to pull them really hard out of the lies of religion because they've been lied to all of their lives. If we don't, who will? If we have been placed in a certain position to help somebody and we don't, their blood is on our hands and not theirs for not telling them the truth. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13. Famous chapter by the Apostle Paul, the love chapter. I wanted to read this. Well, let's just go ahead and read it. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Do we truly love our neighbors? Our neighbor is anybody around us, anybody who we come in contact with. Loving people is telling them the truth. Have you ever thought about that? Telling them about the one and only way back to the Father is through Yeshua Messiah? But then after that, obedience to his word. Revelation twenty two fourteen says, Blessed are those who do his commandments, for they shall have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. And the apostle James says, Faith without works is dead, just as the body without the spirit is dead also. Do we, what lengths do we go to to preach to others, to tell others? What level of love do we have for a lost and dying world? You're just sitting on the sidelines waiting for God to do a miracle in you? He commands us, He tells us to get up and to go, to preach the gospel. It is our duty. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. He's calling you, do it. Ezekiel 33, back to the Old Testament. This chapter scares me to death. Ezekiel 33, 1 through 20. Moreover, the word of Yehovah came to Jeremiah a second time. Whoop, I'm in Jeremiah, I need Ezekiel. My apologies. 
Ezekiel 33, 1 through 20. Again, the word of Yehovah came to me saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people and say to them, when I bring the sword upon the land and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman. When he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning. If the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes warning will save his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman over the house of Israel, Therefore you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Therefore you, O son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus you say, if our transgressions and our sins lie upon us, and we pine away in them, how can we then live? Say to them, as I live, says the Adon Yehovah, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his wicked way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? Therefore you, O son of man, say to the children of your people, The righteousness of the righteous man shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall because of it in the day that he turns from his wickedness. Nor shall the righteous be able to live because of his righteousness in the day that he sins. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, but when he trusts in his own righteousness and commits iniquity, none of his righteous works shall be remembered. But because of the iniquity that he has committed, he shall die. Again, when I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, if he turns from his sin and does what is lawful and right, if the wicked restores the pledge, gives back to what he has stolen, and walks in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sins which he committed shall be remembered against him. He has done what is lawful and right, he shall surely live. Yet the children of your people say, The way of the Adon is not fair, but it is their way which is not fair. When the righteous turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he shall die, because of it, but when the wicked turns from his wickedness and does not, and does what is lawful and right, he shall live because of it. Yet you say the way of the Adon is not fair, O house of Israel. I will judge every one of you according to his own ways. <clears throat> I believe Mishpaha is children of the Most High Yah. We are called out to be set apart to be called watchmen on the wall. Every last one of us. We all have neighbors, we all have family, friends, and loved ones that we come in contact with on a daily basis. Unless you live under a rock somewhere, we come in contact with people each and every day. And we are commanded to be a shining light, witness, and blessing, and warn people of their sin. Because if they don't turn away from it, they shall surely die. Sin can be found as a transgression of Yehovah's law in 1 John 3, 4. And the laws and the commandments of Yehovah can be found in the Torah, Genesis, through Deuteronomy. A good starting point would be Exodus chapter number 20, where the Ten Commandments are found. That's a very good starting point. If we don't warn people, Mishpaha, the blood 
will be on our own heads. I, the reason why this scares me to death is because I, don't, I can't tell you how many people that I did not witness and minister to that Yah told me to. Their blood shall be on my head for not warning them. And I've asked God to beg, I've begged God to forgive me for that, for not taking heed and listening to what He told me to do. And I pray that Yah would have mercy on them and myself. But every time now that Yah says, witness to them, be a blessing to them, show them the love of my son Yeshua, tell them about living a life of sin, be bold, be courageous, I am with you. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. It should not matter what other people think about you. It only matters what Yah thinks about you. And when we have that mindset, nothing else matters. Only living a life of faith and obedience to the word of Yah. How many people have you witnessed to minister to this week that you've come in contact with? How will people remember you? Do they see Yeshua through you? Or do they just see you as another ordinary child of God? Or do they even know you as a child of the King? What have you done this week for Yeshua to build His kingdom? And I'm preaching to myself. What have we done this week to witness to others and to warn people about living in sin, about trying to worship Yah the, the way that the world does. This time of year, we need to tell people that Yah hates their new moons and their appointed times and that they... And we all need to observe the biblical feasts found in Leviticus 23. I'm not going to read Leviticus 23, but I encourage everybody to go and read it for themselves. It talks about the Sabbath and it talks about the seven appointed feasts of our Savior, Master Yeshua and our Father. And how He wants us to observe those. Because Yah hates man's New moons and appointed times, Christmas, Easter, Valentine's Day, Halloween, all of those are garbage and nonsense created by the devil himself through man. And we need to warn people when they observe them, they're not observing Yah's ways. They're observing the God of this world. And they need to be aware of that. It's a person's choice if they want to continue doing that or not. It's not our choice. Our job is to plant and water seeds and that's it. But if we're doing the same things as what they're doing, how are they going to believe what we tell them? It's called being a hypocrite. Saying one thing and doing another. Is there any hypocrisy in your life today? that you need to repent of, to turn away from? How do people see you and look at you? Do people see Yeshua through you? Or do they see you just as another believer who claims to be a child of the King, but yet they see you doing the things that the world does? How do people look at you? All these questions I'm asking, I've asked myself. They've come back to me first. I've had to do heart check after heart check after heart check to make sure that my life is pleasing to God first. <clears throat> Making sure that I'm living my life, not being a stumbling block to others, but yet being bold and courageous when I'm presented with a topic or with a discussion why do you do what you do? Well, let me tell you, this is what the Bible says. The Bible tells us to be instant in and out of season, ready to give in an account why we do what we do. It is our sole duty on this earth, Mishpaha, to warn people 
of the dangers of living in sin and being disobedient to God's word. It is our sole duty to tell them about the love of Yeshua, but it's their choice to reject it. We can't make that choice for them. But it is our it is our choice to choose how we serve and worship the Lord, whether it's the way that the Bible says. May we choose today to serve God the way that He wants us to serve Him, the ways that please Him, not our flesh. Deuteronomy 12, 1 through 5. These are the statutes and judgments which you shall be careful to observe in the land which the Yehovah Elohim of your fathers is giving you to possess. All the days that you shall live on the earth, you shall utterly destroy all the places where the nations which you shall dispossess served their gods on the high mountains and on the high on the hills and under every green tree. And you shall destroy their altars, break their sacred pillars, and burn their wooden images with fire. You shall cut down the carved images of their gods and destroy their names from off that place. You shall not worship Yehovah your Elohim with such things. But you shall seek the place where Yehovah your El chooses out of your tribes to put his name for his dwelling place. And there you shall go. And then jumping down to verses 28 through 32. Observe and obey all these words which I command you, that it may go well with you and your children after you forever, when you do what is good and right in the sight of Yehovah your Elohim. When Yehovah your El cuts off from before you the nations which you go to dispossess, and you displace them, and dwell in their land. Take heed to yourself that you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed from before you, and that you do not inquire after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? I will also do likewise. You shall not worship Yehovah your El in the way for every abomination to Yehovah, which he hates they have done to their gods, for they burn even their sons and their daughters in the fire to their gods. Whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add to it or take away from it. Giving them a warning. And I believe John, the beloved, when he was writing the book of Revelation, this just came to me. Revelation twenty two eighteen. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of this prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these words, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Do not learn the way of the Gentiles, the way of the nations do not serve God the same way that this world does. Be careful, be diligent, be purposeful to serve Yehovah Elohim the way that He wants us to serve Him, Mishpaha. Amen? So, if anybody has questions about certain worldly holidays, what would you recommend? So, if anybody has any questions, about certain festivals that this world celebrates. Please don't hesitate to reach out to any one of us here at SY7, and we will be happy to answer your guys' questions, and we will make sure to back everything up with what the Word of God says. Thank you. <laughs> Isaiah 1, 1 through 20. <clears throat> Isaiah 1, the vision of Isaiah the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Yehuda and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Yehuda. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for Yehovah has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. 
The ox knows its owner and the donkey its master's crib, but Israel does not know my people, do, and my people do not consider. Alas, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a brood of evildoers, children who are corruptors. They have forsaken Jehovah. They have provoked to anger the Holy One of Israel. They have turned away backward. Why should you be stricken again? You will revolt, revolt more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faints. From the sole of the foot even to the head there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed up or bound up or soothed with anointment. Your country is desolate, your cities are burned with fire. Strangers devour your land in your presence, and it is desolate, as overthrown by strangers. So the daughter of Zion is left as a booth in a vineyard, as a hut in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city, unless Jehovah's veil had left us a very small remnant, we would have been become like Sodom, we would have been made like Gomorrah. Hear the word of Jehovah, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the law of our Elohim, you people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices to me, says Jehovah? I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed cattle. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or in the lambs, lambs of go or goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand to trample my courts? Bring no more futile sacrifices. Incense is an abomination to me. The new moons, the Sabbaths, and the calling of assemblies, I cannot endure iniquity and the sacred meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They are a trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Put away the evil from your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says Yehovah. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be white as they shall be as wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat of the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of Yehovah has spoken it. Now I want to touch on this a little bit. I've talked about the festivals and the feasts of what the world does. Now, I want to say this before I get to the statement. I do believe that there are people out there who truly love Yeshua, who truly love the Father. Their eyes just not have been opened up yet to the full truth of God's Word. I believe that with my whole heart. And number one, we're commanded to go out and to tell, tell the nations about Yeshua and about His ways. That doesn't stop just going outside these four walls. We all, as children of God, most of us, if not all, came out of Sunday church. I did. I was an independent Baptist, and I loved the Lord with all of my heart and soul. But is Sunday church biblical? No, it's not. If you go into the New Testament, the disciples met each and every day. But they did not keep Sunday as the biblical Sabbath. Coming into the knowledge of the truth of God's holy word, we found that the biblical Sabbath is on the seventh day from Friday night sundown to Saturday night sundown. And like I said, I truly do believe that there are many people still sitting in the pews Sunday morning that love the Lord. And Mishpaha, it's our job to go and tell them that Yah hates their new moons, their Sabbaths, they're set apart times, just as Isaiah chapter 1, verses 1 through 20 says, Yah hates it. 
We know if you do any studying at all that the Roman Catholic Church changed the true biblical Sabbath to Sunday. They believe that their authority is over God's authority and over His Word and that they can do whatever they want. That is wrong on every single level because God is the Creator. He is in the heavens and the earth is His footstool. And it is our job to, go, to study the Word, number one, to study to show yourself approved unto God. And then it's our job to go and preach the truth of God's Word to a lost and dying generation. Yes, you will be hated for it. But know this, that the world hated Yeshua before it hated us. I'm going to get into that here in a little bit too. True love, the highest form of worship is obedience to God's word. True love, John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. In John 15, 14, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you to do. <coughs> are we doing what we're commanded to do? Because if we are, we're a friend of God. If not, then we're an enemy of God. Which would you rather be? Are you going out and telling people about the lies that they're living in? People are unawares of what they're doing. They're just, they've inherited lies their entire lives. Just as we see in Isaiah 1, verses 1 through 20. That chapter again, he hates the lies that people have inherited and that they're walking in. They're an abomination to him. Come out from among them, as Revelation 18 says, and be set apart, my people, unto me, for my honor and for my glory. Do that. If they don't turn away from their sins and their iniquities, if people turn away from their sins and iniquities, he will remember them no more. He cast them as far as the east is from the west to be forgotten. He won't bring them up again. Are we showing the true love of Yeshua to our neighbor? As it's commanded in Matthew 22, I believe it is. Let me... Do I have that up there? No, I don't. Matthew 22. <coughs> Matthew 20. Yep, Matthew 22, 34. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees and gathered together, then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Yeshua said to them, You shall love Yehovah your Elohim with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Yes. That is 100% true. But are we loving our neighbors enough? Are we loving our family members enough to warn them to keep the commandments and to love Yeshua, to turn from their wicked ways, to stop serving God the way that the world does? Come out from among them, my people, and be set apart unto Him. Don't serve me the way that the nations serve me, says Yehovah. First John chapter number three, all the way in the back of the book. I love the book of First John. 
Religion hates it. Religion stays away from this book. You know why? Because it talks about loving God and keeping His commandments. 1 John chapter number 3, verses 1 through 24. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know Him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know what He is. But we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who has this hope in Him purifies himself just as He is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that He was manifested to take away our sins, and in Him there is no sin. Whoever abides in Him does not, does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen Him or known Him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as He is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, was made known, that He might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for His seed remains in Him, and He cannot sin because He has been born of God. In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. That word love there, telling your brothers and your sisters, telling your family, friends, and loved ones about the truth of righteousness versus unrighteousness. Verse number 11, For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers righteous. Do not marvel, my brethren, it, if the world hates you, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love because he laid down his life for us, talking about Yeshua here. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and see his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him how does the love of god abide in him my little children let us not love in word or tongue but in deed and in truth and by this we know that we are of the truth and we and shall assure our hearts before him for if our heart condemns us god is greater than our heart and knows all things Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. In whatever we ask, we receive from Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of His Son, Yeshua Messiah, and love one another as He gave us commandments. Now He who keeps His commandments abides in Him and, and He in Him. And by this we know that He abides in us by the Spirit whom He has given us. And then 1 John chapter 4, verses 7-21. through 21. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who, he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was manifested toward us that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us, because He has given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent His Son as Savior of the world. 
Whoever, whoever confesses that Yeshua is the Son of God, a God abides in him and he in God. And we have known and believed that love, the love that God has for us. God is love and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. And he does not love his brother whom he has seen. How can he love God whom he has not seen? This is the commandment which we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. There's a lot there. And that is not the same type of love that this world is telling us to have, the same type of love that religion is telling us to have, to be tolerant for everybody. This is the love to keep the commandments and live. It is our sole duty as children of God to go and proclaim the name of Yeshua and obedience to a lost and dying world. If we, don't, if we don't do that, do we truly love God our Father? Thank you. No, we do not. I don't believe we do. <clears throat> I mentioned this verse of Scripture earlier, Matthew 9, 36 through 38. Matthew 9, 36 through 38. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the dawn of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. What are we waiting for? If we're called children of Yah, if we're called children of God, There's a job for us right there. The benefits are great. God will provide your every need. What are you afraid of? Being rejected by the world? Don't matter. We don't live for this world anymore. We're children of the Most High God called out to be set apart for His honor and glory. What are we doing to expand the kingdom? For His honor, for His glory, and for His praise, Mishpaha. The word tough love, according to Wikipedia, is defined as the act of treating a person sternly or harshly with the intent to help them in the long run. With that verse of script, or with that definition, I want to go to Jude 1, 17-23. Right before the book of Revelation, I read that definition of tough love to read this verse of Scripture. Jude 1, 17 through 23. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Adon Yeshua Messiah, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of Elohim, looking for the mercy of our Adon Yeshua Messiah unto eternal life. And on some having compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, even hating the garment defiled by the flesh. We can't go around coddling people and telling them that everything will be okay. Just stay right where you're at. No, we need to warn them. We need to hate the garment that is even spotted by the flesh. We need to warn them about the dangers of sin if they continue on their path. 
Tough love, again, is defined as treating a person sternly or harshly with the intent of help them in the long run. We're told in Jude 1, verse 22 and 23, but on some having compassion, it's okay, or not say it's okay. Hey, come with me. I want to show you where you erred. I want to show you what the truth of the Word of God says. And some of them, you have to pull them, pull their arm out of their socket and get them out of the fire, get them out of the sin that they're living in. Using discernment on how to do that, asking Yah to help you. If they know better, they need pulled out and they need pulled out fast and brought back before it's too late, before there is no hope for those people. You know, I wonder what kind of tough love John the Baptist had. We look at his ministry and what Yah allowed him to do. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Matthew 3, 1 through 12. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of Jehovah, make, path, make his paths straight. Now John himself was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all of Judea, and all the rain around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to the baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warns you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not think to say to yourselves, We have Avraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from those stones, and to now, and even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the fire of the Holy with baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. John the Baptist and the prophets of old, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Obadiah, Zephaniah, All of these prophets, all of the apostles, the disciples. Did they preach a sugar-coated gospel? No, Mishpaha. They preached, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent of your sins, repent of your wicked ways. They put the fear of God in them. Make them think about eternity, where they would spend You know, you look at Yeshua's ministry. He went into the temple and he flipped the tables. He was making a point. This is my father's house. The scribes and the Pharisees should have known what to do and what not to do. But they were feeding themselves. They were feeding their own flesh. They thought what they were doing was right. But then Yeshua also had compassion on others. The woman who was caught in adultery, he knelt down and wrote in the sand. And then she looked up and Yeshua asked, where are your accusers? There were nowhere to be found. Yeshua put his arm around her. I, I just have to imagine this. Yeshua put his arm around her and said, okay, my child. Go and sin no more. He had compassion. She repented and she turned and followed Yeshua.
It isn't no different in today's day and age. Those who claim to know the truth, pastors, teachers, rabbis, and whatever else you want to call yourself, are you preaching the truth of God's Word from Genesis to Revelation? Or are you preaching some feel-good message, live your best life now? It's okay. It's just a little bit of sin. The Bible says a little bit of sin leavens a whole lump. Are we practicing righteousness or practicing lawlessness? Like I said before, we can't walk with Yon and hold hands with the devil at the same time. And that line is being drawn in the sand today and has been. And Yah is separating the sheep from the goats. He is exposing people right and left. He is exposing ministries, those who are in a position of authority. Judgment comes to God's house first. Are we living our lives the way that we should be according to the scriptures, leading the people like we should be? Or are we too scared because we'll lose people? Because money will stop coming in, we'll lose support. You take money out of the equation, we'll see who's called by God. And who's going to be like John the Baptist and preach repentance for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mishpaha, we're on this earth for this long, but eternity is forever. Choose you this day whom you will serve. If it's the God of this world or the God of the Bible, who are you going to serve? <clears throat> we have a gentleman in our congregation who was on his deathbed a couple years ago from COVID. <clears throat> this was right when he was coming into the knowledge of the truth. He didn't really grow up. He had some resemblance of a faith, of religion, but he didn't truly know who God was. He didn't truly know Yeshua. He was just going off of what he inherited, what he was taught. But now he's living a life of obedience to Yah because when he was on his deathbed and having COVID, that gave him a wake-up call. I need to know who I serve. I need to know where I'm going to go, and I need to make sure I'm going to be on the right side. I need to make sure I'm going to be on the winning team. Choose you this day whom you will serve. It is our job, it is our duty to warn the people. Just as Yah called him out and set him apart, he is trying to tell his family about the truth and the love of God. Are they listening? That's between them and Yah. But that hasn't stopped him from planting and watering seeds. Am I right, brother? Amen. He's sitting right here. Him and I just had that conversation a little bit ago. Are we preaching the gospel to a lost and dying world? Are we helping to pull people out of the lies of religion? Are we helping people understand the Scriptures better and better and better by Yah's Holy Spirit? Yes, we're replaceable if we don't do what the Father tells us to do. We are expendable. We will be taken out <coughs> if we don't do what we're told to do. Are we being that watchman on the wall just like Ezekiel and warning people of the coming dangers of living in sin, living a life of disobedience to God and His Word? Pastors and teachers and rabbi and everybody else who teaches the word of Yah, are you leading your congregation in truth and righteousness? Are you warning them about sin and iniquity? 
Are you more concerned about people's souls and where they will spend eternity and where they will end up? Or are you more worried about padding your pockets and filling the seats in the building by preaching a feel-good message? Who are you more worried about offending, Yah or man? Who do you fear more? Choose you this day whom you will serve. Zephaniah 1, 7 through 9. I know that this isn't a popular message because it talks about repentance and sin and iniquity and going out, getting out of our comfort zone, doing something that does not come natural to us, especially me. I'm more of an introvert. I like staying at home, just minding my own business. But guess what? I've been given a commission. I've been given the command to go. To go and do what my father has told me to do. Why? Because I love him and I don't, and I love people and I don't want to see anybody die in their sin. Zephaniah 1, verses 7 through 9. Be silent in the presence of the Adon Yehovah, for the day of Yehovah is at hand. Yehovah has prepared a sacrifice, he has invited his guests. And it shall be in the day of Yehovah's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the kings' children and all such who are clothed with foreign apparel. In that same day, I will punish all those who leap over the threshold, who fill their masters' houses with violence and deceit. And then over to Malachi, chapter number 1. 6 through 11. A son honors his father and a servant his master. If I am the father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my reverence? Says Jehovah's Veot. To you priests who despise my name, yet you say, In what way have we despised your name? You offer defiled food on my altar, but say, In what way have we defiled you? By saying, The table of Jehovah is contemptible. And when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the, the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably, says Yehovah's veil. But now entreat God's favor that he may be gracious to us. While this is being done by your hands, will he accept you favorably, says Yehovah's veil. Who is there even among you who would shut the doors so that you would not kindle fire on my altar in vain? I have no pleasure in you, says Yehovah's veil, nor will I accept an offering from your hands. For from the rising of the sun, even to its going down, my name shall be called great among the Gentiles in every place. Incense shall be offered to my name and a pure offering for my, for my name shall be great among the nations says Yehovah's veil. And then Malachi 2, verses 1 through 9. And now, O priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear and if you will, and if you will not take it to heart to give, my, to give glory to my name, says Yehovah's veil, I will send a curse upon you and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have cursed them already because you do not take it to heart. Behold, I will rebuke your descendants and spread refuse on your faces, the refuse of your solemn feasts, and one will take you away with it, and one will, then you shall know that I have sent this commandment to you, that my covenant with Levi may continue, says Jehovah's veil. My covenant was with him, one of life and peace, and I gave to him that he might fear me, so he feared me and was reverent before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, and injustice was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity, and turned many away from iniquity. For the lips of the priest should keep knowledge, and people should seek the law from his mouth. For he is the messenger of Jehovah's veil. But if you... But you have departed from the way. You have caused many to stumble at the law. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says Jehovah's veil. Therefore, I also have made you 
contemptible and base before all the people, because you have not kept my ways, but have shown partiality in the law. People say, pastors, preachers, teachers say, law's been done away with. We don't have to do that anymore. Baloney. We do. Those who say that they've been done away with are in danger of hell, fire, and judgment because they're leading people astray. Yah says in Malachi 2, Oh, now you priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear and you do not take it to heart to give glory to my name, says Jehovah's Veil, I will send a curse upon you. I will curse your blessings. I have cursed them already because you do not take it to heart. Behold, I will rebuke your descendants. I will spread refuse on your faces. I refuse your solemn feasts. Christmas, Easter, um, trunk or treat, what, they, what churches do for trick or treat to keep kids off the street. Valentine's Day, all of these are the religious solemn feasts and Yah hates them. And those who promote them, they will be cursed with a curse. Are we being true shepherds of the Most High God by leading people to their knees to repent of their sins? Or are we preaching a feel-good message that keeps people comfortable living in their sin? Are you more worried about padding, the, padding your pockets and filling the church pews rather than being worried about where a person is going to spend eternity? Choose you this day whom you will serve. It is our duty as those who claim to be teachers and preachers and pastors of God's word <clears throat> to make sure that we're looking after the people of what Yah has given us. Need to do a heart check. Who do we serve? 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 8. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Adon Yeshua Messiah, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires they have itching ears and will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Adon, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. In Romans 1, 24 through 32. <clears throat> Romans 1, 24 through 32. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the man leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one for another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them up over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They Mind, mindness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, 
disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but approve of those who practice them. Kind of sounds like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Kind of sounds about like the days that we're living in today. The, the days of Isaiah 520, where good is evil and evil is good. Whom are we standing strong for? <clears throat> Who are we fighting for? Who are we living for? It is our duty to warn the people of the sin of the depravity of the state of not only the United States, but of the world. Are we doing our part? Just like John the Baptist, just like Yeshua, just like Jeremiah, and all of the prophets of old, the judges, they were all hated. Why? Because they spoke the truth. They told people to repent of their sins. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The disciples of old were preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 2,000 years later, we're still preaching the same message. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. <coughs> they had such a passion for the truth and to warn of the dangers of living in sin, and they preached it with all of their might. Because why? Because they loved the people. They didn't want to see anybody die and go to hell. The lake of fire was created for the devil and his angels. It wasn't created for man. I've had people ask me, well, why would a good and gracious God send somebody to hell? I don't believe he sends anybody to hell. He honors their choice to fully reject him, his son Yeshua, and his ways. It's a person's choice to reject. He gave man the free will to choose righteousness or unrighteousness. Yah honors their choice to reject him. And that's the place that they will end up, where their worm does not die. <clears throat> John 15, 18 through 27. If the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world will love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word which I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they... Do not know him who sent me. If I had not come <clears throat> and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had, if I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled which is in their law. They hated me without a cause. And as the book of Galatians says, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Who are we more concerned about? Offending God or offending man? Mishpaha. We are living in the days where, they are, where people are turning away from sound doctrine, from the truth. <clears throat> We are living in those days, just like Yeshua said when he was on that cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That is wrong. Yeshua never backed down from having tough love. John the Baptist never backed down. Neither did the disciples or the prophets. And they were all crucified. They were all martyred. Yeshua was crucified for our sins according to the Scriptures, for the Scriptures to be fulfilled. And those disciples, those prophets of old, they were all hated. But be encouraged, Mishpaha, we're in good company. We need to get over ourselves. Because ourselves, it don't matter. <clears throat> it only matters what he thinks. Who are we more concerned about offending, God or man? 
Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. Go ahead and read that right quick. I read the book of Jeremiah a few weeks ago, and we're going through it as a family now. I love Jeremiah. Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, Yehovah, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. The world tells us to follow our hearts. Yeshua tells us to follow him. Jeremiah warned the people not to follow their own heart and to not follow the dictates of their hearts because it will lead them astray. But Yah's word will keep us safe in his covering if we obey him and his word. Let's turn to uh, Proverbs chapter number 3. I think I read all of Proverbs chapter 3 last week. I'm going to read part of it again today. Proverbs 3, 11 through 20. My son, do not despise the chastening of Yehovah, nor detest his correction for you. Whom Yehovah loves, he corrects, just as the father, the son, in whom he delights. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. <clears throat> she is more precious than rubies, and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are old ways of plentiness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, <clears throat> and happy are all those who retain her. Yehovah, by wisdom found in the earth, by understanding he established the heavens, and by knowledge the depths were broken up, the clouds dropped down the dew. Correction hurts, but it's needed to grow. It takes tough love from those willing to help out others, even if they're standing alone. When we are corrected, it's for our benefit because Yah loves us, and Yah corrects those whom He loves. And some of us have had to have some pretty tough love at times, right? <clears throat> some of us are pretty hard-headed and stubborn and stuck in our ways, and it takes tough love. It takes a time or two to, to break off the stiff-neckedness, Amen. And we need it <clears throat> because we don't want to die and go to hell. If Yah doesn't show us love, if we don't go out and warn people and show them the same level of love that has been shown us, what's going to happen to those? They're going to die without Yeshua and their blood will be on our head. <clears throat> Tough love, pulling them out of the lies of religion, pulling them out of, out of the deception that they're living with the hopes of bringing them into the truth of the Scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, 11 through 18. <clears throat> o Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. Now, in return for the same, I speak <clears throat> as to the children. You also be open. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Messiah with Belial? Or what part has a believer with the unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has says, I will dwell with them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore come out from among them and be separate, says the Adon. Do not touch the unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says Yehovah Almighty. And then Revelation 18, 1 through 5. <clears throat> After these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven with having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. 
And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. And he has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. <clears throat> and the merchants of the earth have become rich through her abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive her plagues. For her sins have reached the heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her as she has rendered to you, and repay her double according to her works. <clears throat> in the cup which she has mixed, mix double for her. I read an extra verse in there, I apologize. Come out from among the lies of religion and be set apart unto Yah for His honor, for His glory, and for His praise. That needs to be our message to those who are still stuck in the lies of this world. To repent of their sins and to come out from among Babylon, to come out of Egypt and be set apart so that they too are not destroyed. True love sometimes have to, has to be tough love, especially when people don't want to listen to what you have to say. And just remember, Mishpaha, that, we're, that we are in good company. Yeshua, the Father, the disciples, the prophets of old, all of them, Mishpaha. What kind of love do we have for those who are around us? Are we willing to go the extra mile to show people what true love truly is as we close out today may this be a word of encouragement to everybody who is walking in the truth of God's word to be bold to be courageous to be instant in and out of season I know that none of us want to see our family members and friends and loved ones go to hell not a one of us <clears throat> it's our job to warn them of the dangers of rejecting God, rejecting Yeshua, and rejecting the commandments of old. <clears throat> we are to show true and tough love to the lost, to a dying generation that so desperately needs Yeshua. And it don't matter what they think of you. The only thing that matters is what God thinks. It took me a few years to get over that. <clears throat> because everybody, we all want to fit in. You know what? I don't care anymore about fitting in. I'm set apart for His honor and glory. And I serve Him and He provides all of our needs. We need to make sure that we're pleasing Him more than we're pleasing men. May the light of Yeshua Messiah shine through each and every one of us and that the true love would shed out on others. Yeshua came into this world. The world hated Him. He came, to a, he came to his people. His re people rejected him. And we, were, we all have the opportunity to be grafted into the family of God. But once we are, Mishpahad, it's his house. It's his rules. They're not ours. They're not here to thumb us. They're here to help us because he loves us and he wants to keep us safe. To have boundaries for us. To keep us safe, Mishpahad. Remember this, and may it be an encouragement, that all the hosts of heaven rejoice that when one sinner repents and comes back into the fold. May we continue, may we press on, may we be bold and courageous and show the same level of love and kindness and tenderness, but yet, if we have to, pull them out of the fire, even if we break their arm. We don't want to see any one of them lost. We want to see them all with us. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, family. Be blessed today.